now that the year is closing out, there are all of these official ranking lists coming out for the top pop stars of not only the year, but this century, the 21st century. Billboard put together an official list of the top pop stars of this century, and it was very controversial. They decided that Beyonce is the number one pop star of the 21st century, and Taylor Swift came in second. I know Taylor Swift is screaming into her pillow right now because she is so shrewd and competitive, <laughs> but I think we know why this happened, don't we? It's because Taylor Swift is white and Beyonce is black. Is that uh, too cynical of a read on it? I think that's pretty much clear. Well, uh, this person in the top says, in conclusion, talent won, so. Yeah, no, no, okay. Beyonce is a better singer, but that's not the point. Billboard explained their criteria for how they chose Beyonce as the number one pop star. They said, while Taylor Swift is the century's biggest pop star by the numbers, from album sales to streams to touring dominance, our editorial staff has chosen Beyonce as our number one greatest pop star of the century based on her full 25 years of influence, evolution, and impact. But it's supposed to be about the 21st century, not her full length of influence. Well, she debuted in the 21st century, so that is why they're saying it. Listen, as someone that has been in the music industry and is familiar with how these things go, it is largely a popular contest and it is by people in the, the industry. So you, it is all industry approval. They gave Taylor Swift the second spot because they couldn't get away with not having her be yeah. on there. But honestly, it probably caused them significant discomfort to give Taylor Swift the second spot. What was mm-hmm. the rest of the list again? Well, it's strange to me. There are a lot of rappers on this list I wouldn't consider pop stars. Rihanna, but Drake, and Lady Gaga. Beyonce, from the top, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Rihanna, Drake, Lady Gaga, Britney Spears. She deserves to be higher up. Kanye West, also not a pop star, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Adele, Usher, Eminem, Nicki Minaj, Justin Timberlake, Miley Cyrus, Jay-Z, Shakira, The Weeknd, BTS, Bruno Mars, the Weeknd just came Lil out like Wayne, last week. <laughs> One Direction, 2012. Bad oh. Bunny. That's I don't know why Bad Bunny is on here. Ed Sheeran and then Katy Perry last. Bad, Bad Bunny is on there because of his uh, global influence, not his American influence. The weekend has been around for longer than you think. You know, well, pa- like 2010. But it is about impact, impact, and he didn't really have as much yeah, of an impact it, until the late 2010s. Um, I mean, yeah, but I'm saying that what they're saying is like, he, I guess he did a lot in a shorter period of time. And he is also, uh, if we're talking Spotify, he's like consistently the top streamed artist on Spotify. Rihanna being number three is mm-hmm. insane as well because she hasn't released music for close to yeah. a decade now. I yeah. suppose that speaks to her influence. One thing, that, to your point about Kanye West and about Eminem, uh, Eminem, Drake. So what that is, it's kind of what we've talked about before. Is like you're no longer allowed to be genre specific. Everything has to be categorized into one big corpo slop. Everything so what? This is, is all pop. It's all pop music now. Uh, I guess you did see like a turning point in the late 2010s where the dominant music genre became rap yeah. instead of pop. Yeah. So they would be considered pop. I guess, colloquially. But just by the numbers, it's true. Taylor Swift was the most streamed artist of this year, whereas Sabrina Carpenter had the most streamed song of the year, Espresso. Mm -hmm. And then another publication, People Magazine, gave Beyonce the best album of 2024 for her country music. Cowboy is, Carter. Uh, again, there was, no cultural, there was no cultural impact of that album this year. I couldn't name any songs on yeah. Cowboy Carter. What would it be then? It would have been the, she had the one song that became TikTok famous. What the, was the top album of 2024? It would have had to be Taylor Swift. No, yeah. no, not mm-hmm. Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Because her, her album wasn't remembered after a month. Brat was the top album mm-hmm. of, of I mean, this I don't year. Even know how Is much that, that by is. Charlie? Charlie XCX had the top album of this year in terms of impact, yes. I will stand by that. Rolling Stone actually named Brat the number one album released I mean, this I, year. I, I would buy more that that's political influence playing into that so that they can lean into what they were trying to do for Kamala Harris. But like, you I weren't tuned the... into it before the Kamala tie-in. 
I was. I knew yeah. that Brat was already a meme that was spreading mm. everywhere before Kamala was Brat. Mm. So that obviously propelled it into more relevance, but I think Charlie XCX deserves that, I feel not like, Beyonce. I feel like Kamala Harris not winning makes that why that would happen. Like if Kamala Harris had won, then sure. Then Charlie would get the credit. But <laughs> since she didn't win, it was a rebuke of that as anything popular and anything real other than a bunch of mm. political operatives pushing it in an insincere way. But also Brat Summer was already over by the time the election happened. Yeah. So it, it was what it was. It was a moment in time. So I do think that was justified. But Taylor Swift being number two, I mean, should she be number one? Do you think she should be number one? Yes, clearly. Yeah. Of this century? Of the last 25 years? Um, is she the biggest artist? I mean, compared to what, Beyonce? I, w I would put Taylor Any Swift of the higher. people on this list. Uh, I don't see any of them as more influential, I guess, but maybe I'm wrong. Even, you know, Justin Bieber being on this list, it's odd that he's so high up because he's on semi hiatus too. Yeah, but again, he uh, he started in, what, 2009? Justin Timberlake being on this list is insane to me. He wasn't that relevant. He was very relevant. He was very... He, he's, Until... He, he is one of the best examples of somebody transitioning from a group into a singles career. He is. Okay. Okay. I guess. He, he, he belongs on that list every bit as much as Miley Cyrus belongs on that list. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I do think this is a race thing. Uh, as far as yeah. uh, Beyonce. The Beyonce worship is out of control. I said this before. She has never been what the media says she is. And also, her most recent music is played in gay clubs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that is that is a subculture still. She had the one song this year, what was it, Hoedown, that... Her country music that, sucked. That became like a TikTok trend. Her country album was basically a mockery of country music. She also hates country fans mm -hmm. because they're racist Republicans. And it was basically a parody of the entire genre. I mean, yeah, it's what we said before. Like most of it always feels like you can, they want to just drop everybody into another genre so that they can expand their audience base rather than actually meaningfully connect with what that genre is. Um, people had the same critiques at first of Post Malone doing country, but then people realized that what he wanted to do was that all along and he did rap first, mm -hmm. right? That was a good transition for him. Yeah, I, I think that. But again, I'm 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 partial to him. But over. <laughs> do you agree that this is this is kind of racial? Uh, the choice to uh, to choose her. Because I, mean, I believe that if Billboard put out this list and put Taylor Swift at the top, it would have been a massive meltdown no, on Twitter. No, like, I don't think. It no, been. I really. Oh, I a meltdown on Twitter. Yeah, I guess. Genuinely, I think that people would freak out because Taylor Swift got this number one prize for being white. When did That's what they Taylor Swift it to. debuted in what, 2006 or mm -hmm. something like that? Beyonce was doing Destiny's Child when the new millennium hit, so she has more time. True. On that list. Yeah. The real loser is Kelly Rowland, who just disappeared but completely. Beyonce also <laughs> debuted solo at the same time as Taylor Swift. Around that so time. So they're yeah. counting that in. Nate sent us a 20. Thank you, Mary. Say it again. That album sucked. I need to say it if no one else will. Mm. Um, I wonder if Jay-Z's mad that Kanye ended up higher on the list. <laughs> deserved, though, for Kanye. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that they put Kanye so high up on the list, yep. given his controversies in the last couple of years. Uh, that that's, shows a bit of unbiased, uh, of lack of bias there, that they're yeah. willing to list. I mean, they could have just left him off the list entirely, and I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't even have thought twice about it. Yeah. Because he's been excommunicated from the media so thoroughly in the last few years. I'm also so disconnected from the K-pop world. Like, it sounds AI generated to me. Yeah. And I don't understand why it became as relevant. But BTS. It has. But I've only noticed that, that women in the West, like white chicks in mm. the West, care about K-pop since like... 2019 because they don't get actual american boy bands anymore so they that's the problem they yeah. they had to like fill that market demand yeah. but there were no you know there were no in syncs there left there were no backstreet boys left I there were no in one feel, directions i actually feel like the weekend would would be higher i, I thought he'd be higher on this list i did really yeah i did i thought he would go higher on this because he just he seems to always win like it's not like he releases stuff and it flops 
Katy Perry got shafted at number 25. Mm. Uh, she she ran pop music in the early 2010s, late late 2000s, early 2010s. So that's it, it's kind of showing exactly where your age range starts because her starting point, Justin Timberlake was like right before that on yeah. his own. When we're talking about like Crimea River in like what 2008 or something like that, um, and that's after the early the think about the late 90s being when he would get his start in a boy band and then become relevant again. Mm-hmm. I kind of look at that as the same way as like some artists don't feel like they have streamlined careers where it just is consistent. They are kind of reborn and start again and have like a second round. Uh, think Shawn Michaels in WWE having like multiple primes in his career. Yeah. Um, like you, you don't just keep going. You start, you have one career and then you come back and you have a separate career. And Justin Timberlake also, you know, he delved into acting as well as, uh, as other stuff. So. And also like, well, when it comes to Justin Timberlake, like he's got a whole career doing Disney stuff. That's basically behind the yeah. scenes. Yeah. You know, Phil, um, did you get your Spotify wrapped? I don't have a Spotify. You don't. Right, you don't use Spotify, so you don't have it. No. Oh. BTS and Bad Bunny are their examples of globalism come to come home to roost because everyone's right. like, "What's a Bad Bunny?" But Bad Bunny is ridiculously <laughs> huge internationally. I literally learned who Bad Bunny was two years ago, mm-hmm. but apparently I wasn't paying attention. I think I list- learned who Bad Bunny was like this year. Yeah, and but then, you, but like, then you like you hear you mean like, the chick that was on Doctor Phil. But then you see that, <laughs> Bahad Bahabi, um, you see that and then you look at their video views and they're like a gazillion. Yeah. It's like, uh, what's his name? The dude who sang uh, Gangnam Style. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like internationally he's like, he's gigantic. To, to a billion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a huge star. It's just that he's a one hit wonder to us. And Americans do have this habit of thinking that unless it's happening here, it's not happening anywhere else. In a sense, it's true, though. Right. So, For at I least mean, the time so, being. Less so now. America. Than- America, what is the saying? America sneezes and the world gets a cold. Like that's still true. It's it was worse before. I mean, it was more prominent before. Yeah. Like now, there's a yeah. lot more melding of of cultures than there ever was. I before. realized that when Despacito came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, racial. Yeah. I mean, but also I think you're right that uh, there is a lot of worship around Beyonce. They just they can't let a blonde haired blue eyed queen of pop win. And I'm not even a Swifty. I can say this as an objective observer. Phil is a Swifty, so he has bias. But I can say for sure Beyonce did not deserve number one on this list. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.